Can we start? Okay, so no? <laughs> Now, okay. So, welcome everyone to uh, my presentation about Cheetah. So, I expect you come here because Cheetah is so nice animal. It's really fast, and that's usually what you expect from uh, running another binaries from your language because you don't want much overhead and fast also in other meanings. You expect that it will be fast to uh, write it. It will be also fast when you read it to recognize what it does. So it's also easy to read, easy to write. And don't forget, uh, Cheetah is quite a danger animal. And also running binaries can be quite a danger, especially if you are passing some parameters and so on. So you should be careful and we also have it this in mind when we start developing uh, this uh, Ruby gem. Uh, by the way, authors of this gem is, uh, are uh, David Maida and myself. And it's now, I think, three or four years old. But now we add some more new features, which I hope you find interesting. So what we will talk about. Uh, at first, I will show you existing solutions in Ruby because we are uh, open source developers, so we like uh, cooperate. So if there is existing solution that fits or just need a few adaptations, it's better to use existing one and cooperate with someone else who helps us to maintain it and also to use it, to document it, and we like to communicate. So I will compare existing solution and also explain why we don't uh, choose it because uh, it's usually its design doesn't fit our needs. And that's hard to adapt uh, design of other tools. Then uh, we, uh, I will show you some uh, features of Cheetah. And last but not least, I will show you uh, the last changes done in last half of a year. Uh, it's mainly a result of uh, adapting Cheetah to be also used in EAST. So currently there are some places in EAST that already use Cheetah for running binaries. So what's existing solutions? Uh, I will start from the uh, most famous one in Ruby, is using backticks. Backticks are uh, easy to use. As you can see, uh, you just uh, place uh, Command in backticks, it's uh, shell expanded, so you can do any fancy stuff here, like redirecting uh, outputs, piping, and such stuff. What's, so, uh, what's not so nice? Uh, it's not secure. The majority of uh, security problems in Rails, uh, in running some scripts, is from these backticks, because uh, you just pass, if you, if you see the second example and you just pass uh, argument, then here can be anything. Like just send pipe or some end command and then remove everything. So if you do this on your web pages, there is a big risk, uh, it can fail. You need to manually uh, handle it somehow. There's some uh, libraries for it, like shell escape, that get string and then escape it. But even single place where you forget to escape it is your security problem. So for us, uh, this is not secure by default. And uh, second stuff we don't like much is uh, checking errors. Errors is checked by global variable uh, question mark. And then you need to check what's the uh, exit status of this code and then react on it. And if you, again, if you forget to check it, it can happen that you just ignore some errors and later you have bigger problems. So we prefer to fail uh, quickly if something goes wrong. So another possible call is uh, using system. System is more secure because it uh, doesn't interpret uh, string as shell command. It uh, just uh, sent uh, these parameters to to exec call. 
So if you write system get something, then each parameter is just only one parameter. So if you pass a parameter from uh, your user, it's always just one parameter. No shell expansion, no more problems. But as you can see, the result is if a command ran correctly. But if you need to get uh, your standard output or uh, error output, you have to play with uh, default uh, streams that's attached to command, which is not so nice because you need to close existing ones, uh, open new ones that ideally do some string stream, capture it. So it's not easy to use and definitely not fast to write it correctly. So that's also why we don't like it so much. And also because it doesn't use exceptions, you can sli uh, simply over over overlook sorry uh, that command failed. There's something more Linux specific, which is uh, popen3, and there's also popen4 as uh, gems. So it's not uh, part of. Uh, I think popen3 is part of uh, Ruby standard library and popen4 not. Uh, but as you can see, syntax. It's quite tricky. It opens some block and it passes a lot of uh, streams. It also passes some uh, thread object that uh, holds uh, its uh, exit status, for example, after finishing of this command. It can allow some waiting. It allows some more interactive. It's and but problem is it's quite low level. It's really quite one to one to a Linux system call. So it's not so easy to use. One nice feature that it have, it uh, can pass uh, environment variable, which is quite useful if you programmatically run uh, some script or some binary that uh, if, you, if you have different local, like you have Chinese user, so he have Chinese locals loaded, everything is shown in Chinese and you want to parse some output of command. And if you get Chinese, I don't believe your program handle it nicely. So it's nice that you can pass and I want to run it with standard locals. Maybe also some some uh, secure one like uh, do not use display or use this display and so on. So it's quite nice that you, you can pass this environment and it's uh, changed only for this call. But as I said, its usage is not so easy to do it, and it's a lot of code. Yeah, and another nice library, it's called Cocaine. You maybe find this name uh, familiar if you are drug users. So uh, it's created by uh, Tubot, which is one of companies uh, that uh, are quite famous in Orbi world. It's uh, objects, which is quite different to other calls. That other other uh, libraries is just some calls. Uh, Cocaine is object oriented. You create some command, you can run it. It allows some uh, uh, parameters passing, which means you construct uh, some command and set okay. And these two parameters are passed by user of this object. So you 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 use run and pass, and I want these two parameters to be replaced. It uses exceptions, which is nice. So if something fails, you get exception and it force you to handle error states. If you don't do it, then you're, you need to have some global handler and it shows something goes wrong. So you quickly catch any problems. Uh, it looks quite promising for us, but the uh, problem is that uh, they have different focus. They have they really focused on reusable commands. That you have a command and then run it multiple times with different parameters and somehow capture objects and so on. And also it's quite controversial to add it to our to add this uh, gem to our enterprise distribution. It can cause some well jokes. <laughs> so 
in the end, we decide we would like to have do it our way. And now let's show it if uh, you think we are succeed. So for simple use cases, it's simple to use. As you see uh, the, the first line, it's uh, basically same as system call. So you have each uh, parameter is, is one argument. So no, no dependency injections. And it's simple get something. So even someone who don't know Cheetah can recognize what it probably do. And if you need uh, output from this command, you just pass in second example is uh, capture standard output and it's returned. So, so the return value is standard output. It also supports uh, streams. So if you have, for example, very big file and you need to uh, process it by uh, partial parts, then you can read just a few bytes, process it, and then continue. So it's, uh, you can see here, uh, we open some file and then let some command do something with it. In this case, it's standard, uh, we write standard output to this file. So it's like uh, capturing output in uh, shell. You can also use it for standard input and error output. So if some command uh, process by parts, you can pass, for example, some uh, network stream or whatever streams you have in mind can, can be used for this stuff. It also support pipes, which is uh, except backticks, not other uh, libraries support it. And again, we try to have a uh, quiet uh, familiar syntax and easy to recognize. So probably even if you don't know much Cheetah, you can recognize that probably it runs some get command and then grab result for some keyword. So even, I hope it's intuitive enough to recognize what it do. And at the end, we, we capture the, the result. Um, what's the message to standard error? Yeah, uh, good. Uh, so I repeat a question, uh, what happens to standard error? Uh, we, by default, uh, we, we have a logging, which I will talk about next slide. So uh, it's locked, standard error, but if you don't uh, want it to capture, it's not returned. And if you want, if you would like to have it, you can just write uh, as another parameter, standard error capture, and then it return a tuple, uh, just uh, two, two elements. So, so you write result, uh, comma, error equal, Cheetah run and it will return you error output. So if you would like to have it, you can get it. And by default, we, we lock the outputs for it. Yeah. And as I already mentioned, there is some logging. So you see uh, by default, uh, it uses uh, Ruby logger interface, so you can register your own logger uh, that you would like to get messages from Cheetah, and Cheetah then write, I run this command, it return, <coughs> sorry, it return this standard output, um, it return this error output, this exit codes, and so on. And of course, we uh, use exceptions because we think it's much better to have, have it. It returns uh, Cheetah execution failed if uh, comma command output is non-zero. And I will talk later that for some commands it's not uh, the perfect behavior, so we also slightly adapt it to, to fit needs. But by default, if you don't specify that you expe ex uh, expect any error codes, it will raise exception that unexpected error code happen and probably something goes wrong. And this exception already contains, for example, standard error output. So, so you see what, what the program writes to error output. So that's 
uh, features we have from beginning in Cheetah, and now uh, what we also modified to be easier to use it in Yast because Yast mm -hmm. have some specific needs. So, few stuff. Uh, at first, you see, as I mentioned, there is some uh, binaries that have expected error, mess, uh, error output, exit status. Like uh, if you grab something, then one means that uh, the search uh, pattern is not found. And it happened quite often and usually you, uh, it's not error. It's just, okay, we, we don't find it. So you, you can uh, specify allow exit status one and then it automatically adds uh, to the return uh, stuff uh, what code it returns. So as you see in example code, it's just written the code because we only want exit status. But if you want also standard output on standard error, then the exit status is at last position. And uh, as you can see, uh, you can pass also more than just one, one integer. You can pass range, you can uh, pass any array, you can pass also almost anything that responds to include method. And uh, Cheetah just ask, is this exit uh, status in, uh, in this allowed one? And if it's include, then it's fine, okay. User expected, just return it. And if it's not, then it raise exception. Uh, another feature is passing environment variable because as I said, uh, for example, in Yast we use it uh, very often because Yast is localized and we need to get uh, some uh, parsable output. So no Chinese, no Turkish or Spanish, just common English. And uh, last but not least, uh, we allow to run commands in uh, change truth. It's uh, very important for Yast because uh, during installation, you mount your target system and want to do there some stuff like uh, regenerate init RD and such stuff. So you, and you need to run it in that different uh, route. So you ensure that it run installed in it, uh, make init RD and not the in sys1 and so on. And in the end, uh, because uh, Cheetah already used some forking and such stuff, doing uh, routing is very, very simple. You ju it's just one call in, in a Ruby. The only uh, drawback is that you have to be root to use this feature. So, but it's uh, by default the, the permissions on Linux. So if you want to uh, know more, there's uh, more examples, uh, more features that I don't mention here. You can go on, uh, to Cheetah uh, project, which is with libs on GitHub, under OpenSUSE umbrella. It's uh, maintained, it's available currently in uh, Tumbleweed. I think leap 42.2 is also, I think 42.1 doesn't uh, have it but I'm not sure. So, but for newer distributions, it's available and you can freely use it. Okay, so do you have any questions to, to this gem? Okay. It's gem. There's a microphone. At me. Does it work? Yes. This gem is also available in the Ruby distribution package manager, right? Yes, it's available on rubygems.org. Uh, you can install it anywhere. It doesn't have any, uh, any dependencies that's related to just OpenSUSE. It works on any Linux distribution. It, uh, what, where it doesn't work is Windows because Windows doesn't have something like pipes and so on. We use uh, some lower level Linux stuff. And also I don't try it on any other Unixes. 
because it used some calls that are part, uh, part of uh, Unix uh, standards, but I worry there's also some stuff that's only Linux specific. So I, I don't try it on something like IX or like this. Okay, follow up question. Do you have a preferred way of getting Cheetah, if it Ruby Gem or the uh, Zipper Open Susie? Are they equivalent yeah. or? Uh, they are basically equivalent in, uh, it depends of course uh, where you need. Uh, it's usually very up to date because as I am upstream and also maintainer in OpenSUSE, when I release new version, I also release new, I edit to build service. So it's there. Uh, advantage of RPM is that it uh, offers you when new version appears, that you can do it, but of course you can do it in the gem by gem update. So they are quite equivalent. Uh, also, we have nice feature in OpenSUSE that when we pack uh, Ruby gems, uh, we keep uh, the gem meta me <coughs> gem data. So if you then use uh, if you install other gem that depends on uh, Cheetah, and if you che Cheetah in in is installed via RPM, the gem uh, packager still see the Cheetah because uh, when you use RPM, it also registers it into gem database on your PC. So basically, I recommend to use RPMs because it's easier to, to see it and to manage it in one tool. And also, uh, gems see uh, gems installed via RPM, but not uh, vice versa. If you install something via gem, the RPM doesn't know that you install it via gem. Okay, more questions? Okay, so I have one question. Uh, who I convinced to try this gem? Hands up. <laughs> nice, six new users of Cheetah, great. So thanks for your attention and you can contact us uh, as I am part of uh, YAS team. Uh, the easiest way is to contact uh, whole yes team on Freenode on our, our mailing list. And at the end, I would like to thank uh, Richard Brown for creating these nice templates because my usual, usual, usual slides are just white ones. So thanks to him and thanks to you. Thank you. <laughs>